I'm going to start by reading a quote from uh, one of my favorite pieces of work called The Law of One. Many of you will be familiar with that material by now if you've been um, participating in my work for a while. I'm leaving out certain sentences because it gets quite technical, but <clears throat> I'll summarize it here. The heart of the, so this is Bayra. <clears throat> the heart of the discipline of the personality is threefold. One, or you could say step one, know yourself. Two, accept yourself. And three, become the creator. Now, essentially what we're doing when we're tapping into God's love is we are in process of that third step, becoming the creator. And this is why I said it is immensely helpful to come to an acceptance of yourself and the stuff um, and the judgment and so forth, because that really clears the path to becoming the creator. Now, essentially, from a timeless point of view, you are already that source, you are already that creator. And you could replace the word creator with God here, if you want. And Ra proceeds with saying that third step, becoming the creator, is that step which, when accomplished, renders one the most humble servant of all, transparent in personality, and completely able to know and accept other selves. To become the creator, or God, is to become all that there is. There is then no personality in the sense with which the adept begins its learned teaching. So the heart of the discipline of the personality is threefold. One, know yourself, means recognize what's going on, recognize how you're feeling, recognize what you're doing, recognize your patterns, recognize this little inner conditioned gremlin, this substitute parent that you created as a child to take care of you because your parents weren't perfect. No offense. It's just the nature of humanity, right? So in order to take care of yourself, you outsourced a whole bunch of your free will, because you weren't mature enough in your thinking, in your intellectual capacity, your intellect wasn't enlightened yet wasn't matured yet. Um, plus, you you're dealing with the veil, the three dimensional veil of forgetfulness, not fully knowing, not fully seeing who you are, not fully experiencing the oneness with all that there is. So under those conditions of the incarnate state in 3D, with imperfect parents, you have developed a substitute parent, something to keep you safe, something, a, a program, if you will, I often call this the gremlin, inner gremlin, uh, many have called it the ego, but I prefer different terms. And so this gremlin is like this super intelligent, artificial intelligence. It's an AI system, basically, that you have created, you have produced. So you've, you've given more than 90% of your capacity for intelligence, the bandwidth of your mind, and you've outsourced it to the unconscious and the subconscious, as uh, modern psychologists would term those domains of your mind. And you've done this out of a single desire, which is to have your needs met. And ultimately, that boils down to the need for survival. That's like the core one. So roughly put, generally, put, I'm not going to go too deeply into this. I just want to give some context for if I use the term gremlin. And I use the term gremlin because it's both kind of creepy, but it's also kind of cute. You know, the gremlins, if you see them, they're kind of endearing, but they're also, you know, you don't want them in your bed. So <clears throat> it's kind of like that with the ego, no? <laughs> so this program was perfectly valid when you were a child, when you were growing up, because you didn't know any better. You didn't have the enlightened intellectual capacities. You weren't mature as you are now. And, and for many of you, the same applies still, you're still not fully mature, but that's not because you don't have the capacity or the age required to be mature. At this point, it's because you've outsourced a lot of your intelligence to this up and unconscious way of operating. That's now like a program that's acting as if it's you. Sometimes I've also called it the imposter self. So now a reference from Michael Langford. So the imposter self, it, why that's a relevant term is because this gremlin pretends to be you and you're buying it every single second right now as you're listening to me. The one that's listening to me, that thinks it's listening to me, is the gremlin, it's not you. Often we think, oh, well, I've seen through my ego, I've seen through my gremlin. But no, it's the one that's listening to me right now. It's the one that thinks it's seen through the through the gremlin. That's the, that's the part that's still programmed. That's the part that's still operational. 
Now, if you look deeper, yes, there's an awareness within that that is untouched by the gremlin. But for most of us, this programming, this sub and unconscious artificial intelligence, that's borrowing energy and intelligence from your mind that could otherwise be available to you, exclusively to you. It could be yours. The mind could be yours. But it's not completely yours, is it? Because you have incessant patterns, thinking, protecting yourself, biases, preferences, and so forth. This is all a system set up to protect you from the unknown, to protect you from uncertainty, to protect you from what could possibly harm you, or to protect you from other people who have demonstrated that they're not very good at fulfilling your needs, your emotional needs, your needs being expressed and not being heard, and so forth. So I just wanted to give you that little bit of context, that there is this pattern, there's this cute little gremlin that's outdated at this point, but it's still there. You've, you've housed it within your consciousness for a while now. So it started to become very familiar to you. You really think it's you. You really think that the one who's thinking and reasoning and interpreting and, and discerning that that person is you. Ultimately, that's not true. Now, and that's why I use this quote, and I'll, I'll rephrase this or I'll um, repeat this. The third step, becoming the creator, is that step which, when accomplished, renders one the most humble servant of all, transparent in personality. That's a different state transparent in personality and completely able to know and accept other self. There is then no personality in the sense with which the adept begins its learning journey. As your consciousness empties itself from, or rather integrates those levels, those layers, and you stop outsourcing your free will to these conditioned programs and biases and fears, then it's like that energy, that intelligence streams back into your full conscious capacity. You are once again you. You're not harboring an enemy of the state, this cute little gremlin in the back seat of your car that just won't leave your vehicle, that whispers in your ear all the time, that distorts what you're hearing. You're not even hearing, for the most part, what people are actually saying, for instance. That's just one example. And you're not really seeing a lot of what's going on because there's a preconditioned filter that's already there that's very selectively blind. It's very selectively audibly blind. It doesn't hear what's being said. It doesn't see what's, what's happening. It doesn't completely clearly feel what's truly occurring and so forth. Again, just a little bit of context so that you know what I mean when I say the word gremlin. It's not a negative term, okay? That's why I try to steer away from the word ego a little bit. Because in a lot of these enlightenment teachings, the ego has been really made out to be this black, black and white kind of um, negative thing. So picture it like this cute little, but yet also a little bit annoying gremlin that um, has overstayed its, uh, you know, its welcome. And it's time for you to take back your power. That's really the message here. It's time for you to be one being. Because how many of you are there? If you scan your direct experience right now, how many of you are there? How many yous are there in your direct experience of, of being? In your consciousness of I am, of I exist, how many yous can you detect? Isn't it just one? Isn't it just you? Isn't it just this, you, here, I am, I exist, I am? So, but then in front of that I am, or in front of that, basic, naked awareness of existing, of being you, just you, in this nakedness, in this purity, then there occurs these layers, and we've outsourced these, uh, a lot of our intelligence, to a certain program in order to take care of ourselves. That's why I also call it the substitute parent, because it's a parent, it's the parent we never had, and it's the parent that's always with us, it's always there for us to protect us, and it's always there to whisper in our ears what to do, what not to do what to allow in, what not to allow in, and so forth. So step one, knowing yourself, is basically knowing the gremlin. It's not so much yet knowing your true self. That is only happening when you become the creator in step three. Mm -hmm.